Hey guys, welcome back. We're gonna head down to the bottom first thing this morning. The sheep moved from one pen to another, get the animals all fed, and then we're gonna head back up to the garden and do a little bit of planting. What are you doing? Had some rain a few days ago. I bet you guys can probably hear that creek. It is starting to really come up. We haven't even had like spring runoff yet. I don't think we were up in the mountains and uh, it's still cold up there, but yeah, check out this creek guys. Hello, you guys ready to go to your other pen? No escaping today? We'll see about that. Mike just found this cool rock. All right guys, so we tried to pasture the sheep back here with this, uh, you know, mobile sheep netting and man, it's tough using this stuff on our mountainside guys. The, just like the rolls, I guess the undulation of the ground make it difficult and they get right under as well as like the fence just grounds out so easily on the grass and on any sticks or anything that's like just somewhat sticking up. It's really hard to maintain this fence so the electrified uh, aspect of it just like completely goes away, does not keep the sheep in. So I think for now, what we're gonna do is roll this up like I've already started. We're gonna use this as a barrier running across when we go to transfer these animals because we have uh, definitely been fighting keeping them contained, moving them. Uh, we have a few, few tricks that we're gonna try here in the next couple days. Um, but for now, we're just going to string this fence up one side and kind of corral them on the other side. We got everybody in pretty easily this time. They like the corn. The grass is starting to get a little bit thicker over here. So they are loving that. Seen some people talking about how tansy is super toxic to livestock. I've read that to some livestock, um, it's not good for them like horses and cows and stuff, but the sheep do totally fine on it. We had sheep in here all last summer. Um, they eat all the leaves of the tansy and it has no ill effects on them. That can't be their only source of food um, because it's not really nutrient dense enough, but they like it just fine and it is not poisonous to them. I came into the greenhouse yesterday and I have a couple of trays of sunflowers here, different varieties, and I noticed something, Let's see if you can see it, is eating the heads off of almost every single one of these sunflowers that's popped up. There's a few that they haven't gotten to, you can see, but a lot of these have popped up and all of the leaves are gone, those ones. So that's a bit of a bummer. I've sprayed neem oil all over everything in here. So hopefully that stops whatever it is from just mowing down on all of these plants. We can see that. I've got one of these biodegradable trays of kale seeds that I started in the greenhouse. I think I'm ready to put them outside. I'm going to put them under one of the little cold frames that I built in the bed with the spinach and the lettuce. So I'm going to go outside and plant these guys right now. See, they are just starting to pop up and I'm going to plant each little cube right in the ground, cardboard and all. 
these will biodegrade in the garden beds so we don't have to worry about that and they should do just fine outside right now you can see my spinach is doing really really well in these beds over here they're popping up got little spinach leaves coming in lettuce is a little bit slower these are still pretty tiny i'm not too far behind so i'm gonna do some kale right here in the middle of these guys This is all cabbage and broccoli in here, and it is doing great. It's loving the cold frame. They're getting big. Okay, about 99% of my sunflowers got eaten, so I'm going to plant some more seeds in this tray, spray the remaining plants with neem oil and hope whatever bug it is goes away and leaves these alone. We'll really be able to tell if it comes back because there's only a couple left. Okay, I have Few different kinds of mint plants that were actually last year's are popping up again this year and they're getting really big so what i'm gonna do is just pinch off these older bigger stalks put them in some water grow some new roots and then we're gonna have a bunch more little mints got some spearmint some orange mint peppermint I'm not sure what kind this is maybe just regular mint this one is pineapple mint so it's kind of cool All right, guys, now we're gonna move outside to the raised beds here in Liz and I think that it's just finally getting warm enough to start really planting uh, some stuff out here. So we're gonna start planting potatoes and carrots uh, out here in the raised beds. But first, I want to show you guys down here at the uh, sheep pasture where we have all the lambs pastured. Um, we've been working on the fence a little bit and I wanna show you guys that. Wow, pretty windy, guys. Ah, and the little guy is out again. We have been fighting, keeping the baby ram in here. I've electrified this whole bottom wire. Should be hot the whole way around, and I can still see that the ram baby is out. So we're going to try to get him back in real quick, and then we'll talk about the fence. I'm going to try to skirt him this way. He wants to go back in. I don't want to open the gate for him. He's going to jump right back through the fence right here. Yeah. So he can still fit through this fence, which uh, is not great. So let's talk about this fence. What I have gone through and done. Well, let's go down to the end where I did it here. So what I have done here is I have electrified this bottom wire by insulating it from the post on both sides here. And I've just kind of connected a jumper to the main fence or at the next wire up, I guess. And I did the same thing on both sides. So up at the top there, I also cut the wire and uh, insulated it away from the post. And I did that on both sides. So now every strand of wire on this fence is hot. That actually helped us a little bit as well. It made me add in one more tensioner, which just, you know, makes the fence that much tighter. Tries to hold them in a little bit better, but man, obviously 
this little guy, he keeps getting out. So we got to figure that out. Maybe tighten up these wires a little bit and add one more on top. I don't know if you guys have any suggestions, you know, short of just going buying that wire mesh fence, which guys, I think we might have to do because Liz and I want to pasture these lambs all the way up on this mountainside and I don't want to have to worry about them. So I'm kind of leaning towards that wire mesh fence, but I'm just looking for, you know, any way I can kind of make this work. Since we went through all the work of getting it done, you know, we want to use it. So we'll see. Okay, well, Mike is planting the potatoes. I'm back here at the end of the garden. I'm going to do a few rows of these little finger carrots. These are awesome for eating plain or pickling. I definitely think I want to try pickling at the end of the season. We can get a few different harvests out of, the, out of these. You're supposed to plant them every two to three weeks and they take about two months to mature. So that should be plenty of time for our growing season up here in North Idaho. She loves it. All right, guys, so we got these two beds planted with potatoes. Uh, I think they're called russet potatoes. Hopefully they come up. Uh, we don't really know what ones do best here, so we're just going to try these ones and see how it turns out. The next thing I'm going to do to take care of these is I'm going to head to the bottom with a wheelbarrow. I got it loaded up with just this junk weed mat that uh, we're going to bring to the bottom. And I'm going to pick up some of that compost from the chicken coop that Liz and I have been using uh, to kind of put in these beds for a little bit of fertilizer. I'm just going to put a really thin layer right across the top, kind of more or less just to hold a little bit of moisture in, then get some water on it. Oh yeah, gold even <laughs> matching. Yes. Love it. All right, that's cool. A bit of that early season planting done. I'm super stoked how this garden is going to look in the dead of summer. Um, it is supposed to warm way up here in North Idaho, like in the 70s, starting this weekend. Like right? now. Yeah, yeah starting now. now. It's like it's 65, 70 degrees right now. Yeah, so things should hopefully be growing. We will see. Yeah, it is looking really good. So we got two beds of potatoes two beds of carrots planted. We're really hoping that all of those come up. I think we yeah. over planted everything. So hopefully at least half of what we planted comes up. I think they will. Hopefully. So yeah. fingers the, crossed. The soil's good. The water's good. Everything's, everything's doing good. good. Yeah. The garlic's doing really good so far. So yeah, I don't see any reason why it shouldn't pop up. So yeah, yeah. Stoked. this is going to be a really good garden. Hopefully fingers yeah. crossed. Yeah. Let us know what you guys are planting in your gardens this year. Uh, we're excited. This is the biggest garden that we've ever had. So we're hoping to get a lot out of it. Yes. And we appreciate you guys watching. Um, we'll probably have another video coming out, what, on Thursday? Thursday Trying to give you guys yeah. a bunch. Yeah, so yeah. project after project. What's next? More livestock hunting, uh, I believe. Can't wait. We'll Perfect. see you guys in the next one. Thank you.